Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Happy Thursday, everybody. Hope your day and your week are going well so far. We've got a new day, which of course means a new NBA player prop video to share with you guys. But first, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, drop a comment down below, all that good stuff. We are on the road to 100,000 subscribers. And when you hit that subscribe button, we get there just a little bit sooner. We're more than 65% of the way so far, so we really do appreciate it. And always, guys, make sure to like, comment, all that good stuff. Make sure to comment hashtag ride of the day for a chance for your pick to be featured in the pinned comment for today's video. How it works is very simple, guys. All you got to do is comment hashtag ride of the day and give me your pick. And again, I will pick one lucky commenter to feature your pick in the pin comment for everyone to see. No pressure at all. All right, guys, before we hop into today's video, let's do a quick little recap of what happened last night. And listen, I say it all the time. You cannot sit here and celebrate your wins on these kind of videos and these kind of YouTube channels when you don't acknowledge your losses. And look, we got obliterated yesterday. Really, really bad day. Uh, I handed out 10 player props. Now, Jan Carlos Stanton didn't play, so it did void that one. So we ended up having nine props recorded. Uh, we only cashed on three out of nine. Uh, like I said, a really off day yesterday. I'll, you see all the misses on the right side of the screen. I'm not really going to go ahead and, and break each one down. Just overall, a bad, bad day for us uh, yesterday. And, I mean, a couple of them were close. Like, you know, Carlos Rodon gave up two earned runs. Uh, and then they pulled him in the sixth. Uh, he gave up seven hits, so I mean the production was there. The Yankees just couldn't. I mean the Diamondbacks just couldn't convert more runs off of him. Uh, you know, uh, it just it was, it was a bad day overall. So you know we did have a couple of hits that saved us a little bit there, but overall, like I said, a really really off day for us. But listen, that's the gambling game. I know it's it's you know people bet money on these picks that I hand out, and you know I know it's and no one likes when we lose. I especially don't like when we lose. I do bet these picks myself as well. Um, but that's the sports betting game. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. And, and you know, we had a really good start to the year, and then we had a bad day. But, you know, those are going to happen throughout the year, so don't freak out. Uh, we have a new day today, a chance to bounce back. And we'll have plenty of chances to make more money throughout the year. So no worries. And just a reminder, with how horrific yesterday was, we still, on the year so far, have a 24-18 and 18 prop record. So, yeah, yesterday definitely hurt our record. We were 21-12 and 12 going into yesterday. We're now 24-18 and 18 overall. Definitely hurt our record a little bit, but still overall a solid start to the MLB season. That's a solid record to kick off the year. Now, we have a smaller slate today, not a lot of games, so I only have five player props for today's slate. Today will be kind of a shorter video. Uh, tomorrow, we obviously are back with a full slate. So, without further ado, guys, let's dive right into today's video. All right, guys, we'll move over to the outlier screen now. Guys, you know what outlier is. They're the best sports betting tool on the market. There is a special link in the description below, seven-day free trial, to check it out for yourself. So much data. If you watch my videos, you know they are incredible. Thank you to Outlier for sponsoring today's video and all of our MLB player prop videos. All right, now apologies, guys, for this one. I know the, the first pitch here, we have Tigers-Mets for our first game. Uh, first pitch is at 12, 10 p.m. Eastern time. I know somebody commented yesterday in the video. You know, I know the t videos, they, they don't come out uh, super, super early. There's a couple reasons for that. Obviously, first and foremost, Ev also does his two MLB and NBA videos in the morning. We try not to post them on top of each other because it's just not good for, for viewership. It's not good. It's a lot of stuff to throw at you guys in a quick amount of time. So that's one reason why I try to space it out to give a little bit of time in between when Ev releases his videos and when I release my videos. And also, I own a business. You know, I own the pizza shop. Unfortunately, with the timing of things, I can't always... Um, get them out earlier or get them out. I, I, this is the best time I can do. So unfortunately for baseball, when you have these earlier games, I will try my best to get them out as early as possible to you guys. I know today's video will probably be out around 1130 Eastern. So you won't have a ton of time to get this in, but if you guys are watching this, it's the first prop. Hopefully you'll have enough time to get this in. Also, the first prop of today's slate, we're going Francisco Lindor of the New York Mets under half a run. We're getting this as a plus money play, plus 100 on drafting solid value, considering the fact that he's cashes at a 100% hit rate this year so far for the Mets. Four out of four games this year, he has cashed this under. And looking at the head-to-head -head data, you see here three of his last four matchups versus Detroit, including the one time they played this year, he has cashed this under. Now, look, guys, I will be the first one to admit, typically I don't like betting props like this. It's kind of like how my, my methodology in the NBA with betting like three-pointers made and stuff like that. Although, it's, I guess the more accurate like version of that for baseball is home runs, I guess. Uh, they're fun to bet, don't get me wrong, stuff like this. Um, runs is not as egregious. I just Some of these props are so tough because there's a lot of luck that goes into it. There's a lot of things that go into it that you can't control. The number one thing we're looking at, though, for here, here for run props is OBP for on-base percentage. How often does Lindor get on base? And that's what we're really basing this whole prop on is the fact that Lindor has struggled to get on base this season uh, for the Mets. You see here in four games, he's only gotten on, he's only had one hit 
through four games this year, and you look at the walks. Uh, he's so basically he's got on base three times in four games. So really not uh, a great uh, start to the year for Lindor. He's not really getting on base all too much, and the Mets' offense is kind of struggling. So them scoring runs in general has been tough. But Lindor, like I said, has not uh, not been able to get on base here. And you look at Francisco Lindor, his splits in 2023. Overall, a 254 batting average, but versus right-handed pitchers, it does drop to 242. See, his numbers do drop slightly. And Lindor versus uh, Mies of the, of the Tigers here, three plate appearances. I don't know if I just said his name right. Three plate appearances. Uh, he has not gotten a hit off of him since 2018. He has gotten on base once, which I'm assuming is probably a walk. Uh, so the data, the head-to-head data, not a ton to go off of there, but, I, but still overall solid. Like I said, guys, I'm really basing this off of the fact that Lindor is struggling to get on base. And so if he's not getting on base, it's hard for him to score runs. I know, you know, not the most experienced pitching matchup he's going up against here, but overall, I do like the spot here for Lindor. For plus money play, it's a solid risk. All right, guys, for the second prop of today's slate, we're switching over to the Marlins-Cardinals game, 4.15 p.m. first pitch. We're going Nolan Arenado of the St. Louis Cardinals over one and a half hits plus runs plus RBIs. We're getting this from minus 115 odds on DraftKings here. And look, he hasn't had the best start to the season so far. You see here in seven games, he's cashed this over in three out of seven games. Um, averaging 1.57 hits plus runs plus RBIs per game. He had a really big game there versus the Padres back on April 1st. He did catch this last night versus uh, San Diego. Uh, So he's catched in two out of three games they've played uh, versus the Padres, which is pretty good. Um, 2023, last year overall, you saw he did catch this at a 57% hit rate. He averaged 2.17 hits plus runs plus RBIs per game. And look at the head-to-head data here. Six of the last seven times he's faced off with Miami, he's catched this over. He averages four hits plus runs plus RBIs per game versus the Marlins. Of course, that's all last season. But you see here, he's had some pretty big games versus Miami. And the matchup here is fantastic. You look at the pitching matchup Miami tonight. You have Weathers on the mound. He's had a 1-8 record last season, 6.55 ERA per nine innings uh, for Ryan Weathers here. And look at the head-to-head data now. Nolan Arnado had two plate appearances versus Weathers since 2018. And you see here the one uh, one of those two at-bats was a home run. He had a two-run homer. Uh, so solid, again, small, small sample size. But still, it is worth noting the last time that he played him, he did homer off of him. Uh, you see Arenado. Now, the numbers do drop significantly. His batting average drops from 226 to 220 versus left handed pitchers, which is a little alarming. But looking at the pitchup matchup here, Ryan Weathers, his ER right now, it does improve slightly to 6.23 versus right handed batters, but his batting average allowed is 311. 311 versus right handed batters. Nolan Arenado, I think he absolutely takes advantage of the matchup here and cashes this over. It's too good of a matchup not to bet. All right, guys, third prop from today's slate. We're going over to the Guardians-Twins game, 4-10 p.m. first pitch. I'm going to mess up the name. I'm not great with name, guys. Brian Raccio of the Cleveland Guardians, over half total base. We're getting this from minus 135 odds on DraftKings. It is available on Caesars Bet MGM and Underdog here. Look at 2024 so far for Raccio. You see here, five out of six games, an 83% hit rate on this over so far this season. Not a ton of head-to-head data to go off of, but the last time he faced off with Minnesota back in June of last year, he did have uh, one total base. So he did cash the over the last time they played. And you look at the matchup, it's just such a great matchup. Now, there's not a ton of sample size here for Brian Raccio, but it looks pretty good here. Versus right-handed pitchers last season, again, only 53 plate appearances, but a 300 batting average uh, last year versus right-handed pitchers, 247 overall. So he was pretty good versus right-handed pitchers and a smaller sample size. And then Pablo Lopez uh, from Minnesota, you see here versus left-handed batters, it gets a lot worse for him. He goes from a 3.66 ERA to a 4.18. His batting average allowed goes from 238 to 271. Slugging percentage goes up. I mean, it's a really solid matchup spot here. Pablo Lopez struggles a lot more versus left-handed batters. Uh, you combine that with the fact that Brian Raccio, um, again, you know, 300 batting average versus right-handed pitchers here. And again, on 2024 so far, 83% hit rate. He's off to a hot start to the year. He's averaging 1.83 total bases per game. He's cashed in four straight games. I really do like the spot here uh, for Brian. Name pronunciations are going to get me all year long for sure. And it'd be, it's funny because you'd think being Greek and, and obviously the Greek names, how difficult they are and, and European names in general, you'd think I'd know how to pronounce some names, but... Struggle over here, guys. All right, fourth prop of today's slate. We're going over to the Pirates-Nationals games, 4.05 p.m. first pitch. Uh, We're going with Eddie Rosario of the Washington Nationals. Did not mess up that name pronunciation. Over half a strikeout. We're getting it from minus 105 on DraftKings. It is available on BetMGM prize picks and uh, on Underdog here. And you see he's cashed this in seven of his last 10 games. But again, like I said, the whole last 10 game data, we got to wait a little bit longer before we can use it. But, you know, we are starting to get there here. Um, But we are going to look at 2024. 
You see here so far in five games, he's cashed just in four out of five games. He's averaging 1.4 strikeouts per game. Obviously, that game versus the Reds, he struck out three times. Had a couple of bad ones. He struck out twice last night uh, versus Pittsburgh. And yeah, the head-to-head data in both games so far this year, he's cashed just over, averaging 1.5 strikeouts per game. And this is not totally uh, unnormal or irregular for Eddie Rosario. You see last year, he had a 57% hit rate on this over. He struck out in point, he had a 0.86 strikeout per game average last season. So a lot of green there for Eddie Rosario last season. And you look at the matchup stats here, it looks pretty good. Uh, Eddie Rosario versus left-handed pitchers against small sample size last year, but his batting average drops to 233 and his strikeout percentage increases to 26.9. And for Martin Perez versus left-handed batters, it's all pretty much the same. We don't see any ERA or batting average allowed, but we do see the strikeout percentage is 15.6%, which is not too bad. So solid matchup here. Eddie Rosario has been striking out at a high rate to kick off the year. Um, I do like the spot here. Again, it's not like this is irregular for him. He had a 57% hit rate last season. Um, so far, 80% this year. Uh, the Pirates seem to have his number. I think Martin Perez, who we saw last season, uh, 4.45 ERA, uh, 5.91 strikeouts per nine innings. Um, you know, solid spot. He do, we don't have any direct head-to-head data for Eddie Rosario versus Martin Perez, but I do think we do have ourselves a solid spot here. All right, guys, comment 11 down below if you made it this far into the video. We just passed the 11-minute mark. If you're watching, we really do appreciate it. Make sure to comment 11 down below. Our fifth and final prop of today's slate, I will acknowledge the odds are pretty high, but it's too good of a bet to pass up on. We're going with Yohan Moncada of the Chicago White Sox in the White Sox Royals game, 7.40 p.m. first pitch. We're going Yohan Moncada over a half total base. Like I said, the odds are very high here. If you use DraftKings like myself, we're going to get minus 165, minus 160 on bet MGM. Um, like I said, very high odds, but it's a prop I want to take absolutely here. Look at the season so far, an 80% hit rate on the year from Mankata. He's cashed it in four straight games, four out of five overall. He's averaging 1.8 total bases per game. Last year as a whole, a 68% hit rate on this over. 62 out of 91 games last year he cashed, averaging 1.56 total bases per game. And look at the head-to-head data. Each of the last nine times, nine t- straight matchups versus Kansas City, and it might even be more than that. This is just dating back to May of last year. In nine straight matches with the Royals, he has cashed this over, averaging two total bases per game. So the head-to-head data is fantastic. You look at the splits here. You see red for Mankata, like we talked about. Yeah, there's red, but it's a slight decrease. You see his batting average drops from 260 to 255 versus right-handed pitchers. Really not much of a difference there. Um, and you see some slight increases in, in extra base hit percentage. You know, the, the, the data is pretty much the same overall. For Seth Lugo versus left-handed batters, his ERA does improve to 3.44. His batting average slightly increases to 252. Slugging percentage, extra base hit percentage both slightly go up. Um, again, Moncada, though, you look at uh, for Seth Lugo last year, he was 8-7, 3.57 ERA. Uh, you know, overall, was a solid year for Lugo, but I do like the matchup here. Again, nine straight matchups versus the Royals. He has cashed this over, and he's off to a hot start this year. Like I said, 80% hit rate so far this season for Moncada. It's minus 165 for a reason. Uh, I really do like the matchup here. This is the fifth and final prop for today's slate. Like I said, guys, apologies. I know a shorter video today. It's just, it's not a big slate, not a lot to, to look at here. So five props, though, solid. And especially after the night we had last night, we're di- dialing it back in a little bit is probably the smart decision to go with anyways. Guys, that is it for me today. Thank you very much, as always, for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, drop a comment down below. Make sure to comment hashtag ride of the day for your pick to be featured in the pinned comment. Guys, that is it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow with a new MLB player prop video. Until then, I hope we're all winners.